we are going to be looking at the seven aspects and evidences to be gathered on each aspect. And why is gathering evidences important? It is important in order that our reports, when evaluators write reports, that report will be valid. That report will be reliable and the report will be consistent. Let's start with number one, achievement and standards. What are those things that we have to look out for when we are gathering evidences? Number one, we want to collect the assessment scores in all subjects across all grade levels. Grade levels mean all the classes that school operates, the level that school operates. Maybe it's a nursery primary school, maybe it's a college, maybe it's um, an higher college that does um, uh, these uh, Cambridge exams. Whatever level that school operates, we need to collect the results of their continuous assessment. We all know what continuous assessment is. It is test for all subjects and for all classes. Afterwards, we will also need to collect three years, depending on the time you get there. For example, this is 2021. So if you go to a school next week, you will demand for the report for the result of last year, which is 20, uh, 2020, 2019, and 2018. You get the report of the external examination. So, depending on the level that that school operates, if it is a nursery primary school, you get that of primary six because that is the terminal class. If it is a, a junior college, you get the Beke, which is the Nigerian exam, Lagos State exam, or if it is a Cambridge exam, you get the checkpoint. Then for the senior college, you get WIEC, result of three years result of uh, WIEC, three years result of NECO, and if it is a, a school that runs a Cambridge exam, we also get the IGCSE result for the past three years. The analysis. Then we also get three years internal examination result. Just like you are going to get the external, you get the internal. It will assist you to know the performances, the level of performance and achievement of the learners in that school. Whether the uh, learners are performing well according to grade level and whether they are performing well across all subjects. So you get the analysis and then you use it now to determine the grade that will be given to the school. You get a copy of the national learning targets. Just like Lagos State has a benchmark, so also the Federal Ministry of Education has a national learning target. And it's one of the key issues in our book that according to the learning targets and Lagos State benchmark, so you get it and put it in the envelope. Then you also interview children. You interview children across grade levels and must, you must observe their gender. That is, as you are interviewing boys, you also interview girls. And you pick them from all classes, that all levels that the school operates. If it is a, a, a nursery primary school, you pick children from year one, that is primary one, up to primary six and you pick a boy, a girl. And then, if it is a secondary school, you also pick from GS1, that is year 12, to SS3. You pick a boy, a girl, and you take them somewhere conducive, make them feel at home, uh, let them uh, be calm, don't, don't threaten them, and ask questions. We want to test their proficiency in English language. The language of instruction in our schools is English language. 
So you uh, let the children write the name of their schools, ask questions on on anything, and then they can they can write the responses on sheets of paper or and in addition to oral interview. And the last thing that we will also gather under achievement and standard is awards that children get when they go for external competitions. Awards, plates, trophies, um, certificates. It can be pictorial. Maybe the child, when they are presenting the gift to the children, they took a picture and it must be for the, in the past three years, in the last three years, just like all the results that I've mentioned uh, earlier. It must be in the last three years. You get a pictorial picture of this and then you put them in, in the envelope and then use all this now to, it will help you to grade the school and also make your report to be valid. Let's go to the second aspect. The second aspect is still talking about learner's outcomes, and it is learner's personal skills and participation. This second aspect, the evidence is more on observation, because we are going to do more observation than documentation in this aspect. The uh, our observation will be on the extent of spiritual, the extent of cultural, uh, moral, the extent of, uh, uh, extent of social, and the extent of cultural development of the children. And where do we get this? We get it through observation. For spiritual, make sure that whoever is in charge of this aspect attends the morning assembly and observes children. That is on the spiritual aspect because you see that there, there, there is a, 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 a little time where prayer will be said and you look at the countenance of children, you look at their body language and then for social, the way they greet as a visitor because inspectors are visitors in schools, you must have been given a visitor's pass and whoever sees you will see the pass on your on your chest, they will know that this is a visitor. Do they greet? How do they, uh, what is their conduct? How are they behaving around the school? During break time, what, what do you see? Are they engaging in rough play? Are they being calm? Are they not being selfish? There are a lot of things that we, observe, we will see using the observation method. Whoever is in charge who can take a picture of the morning assembly when children, where children will be gathered, just take their picture to see uh, and use it in your report. You put the, uh, report, the picture in your report, just like that of the awards that I said you should take pictures and include it as uh, in the envelope. Moreover, you can get another information through their registers. We want to measure punctuality. Are our children coming to school? Are they regular? Because there is, a, there is a research that has been carried out that when children love education, when they enjoy education, when they enjoy coming to school, then it means that children will remain in school. They will be regular. Not only regular, they will be punctual because they will not want to miss classes. So you look at their attendance registers. How have children been coming to school? Have they been regular? Because they, um, it will make them to have progress in their learning. You look at, you also observe, while you are in the school, you observe relationship between a child, a school child, a learner and another learner, a learner and a member of staff. Is that relationship, is it positive? Is it pleasant when you are observing it? You don't, you don't stay and be looking at them. As you are going about, you are just observing things and taking notes and taking notes and taking notes. And that is also an uh, evidence that you can use to grade the, this 
aspects at the end of the old school evaluation. Then school rules and regulations. Because there is a key issue that says that children are to be involved in the development. They are given a role to play in the development of school rules and regulations. So if they are given a role to play, these school rules and regulations we want to see. Are they, are they in their classes? Are they posted in their classes? Do we have it in the principal's office or the head teacher's office? or the director of studies office who want to see this school rule and regulation, that is an evidence that you put in your, in the envelope. Then we also want to see, because one of the key use says that the contribution of the learners towards the community where the school is located. We want to see, do they have pictorial evidence? Do they have a uh, somewhere that they have locked it, logged it in their logbook? Maybe they went to give um, charity to um, a motherless home. Maybe they went to an orphanage home. Maybe they went to old people, uh, people's home. Maybe they went to prison to donate, to give cash, to give um, gifts. We want to see if they have done something like this in the past, and if they have pictures of it, and it could be a, a contribution from the school to the community. Maybe as a private school, they have given some um, items to government schools around them. We have seen such schools in the past that will go and donate furniture, school furniture to a government school. We have even during this COVID, I remember I was passing through um, a street uh, on CMD, very close to this place, and I saw school children, they flagged vehicles down and they were giving us paper. And when I looked at it, I saw that it contained information on COVID-19. It is a contribution towards that community where the school is situated. So things like that. We want to see our, our schools been doing such, and if they have, they should show us. Is a pictorial evidence. The other point there talks about awards and certificates. It's also the same thing that we see in uh, under achievement and standard. Then we want to see the clubs and society records. Are, are they engaging in clubs? Because one of the key just says that the, the building skills of learners in co- and extracurricular activities, which means that we want children to be in clubs, we want them to be in societies, and if they are there, what do they learn there? They learn about leadership skills. They learn skills that they can use after leaving the school. Life skills are taught at these clubs and societies. They also learn things that can impact their literacy and numeracy. They learn at these clubs. For example, indoor games, they call them indoor games. You see children playing Monopoly. What does Monopoly teach? It teaches numeracy. It teaches addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. You see children play chess. Chess teaches critical thinking. It teaches concentration. You see children playing Ludo. Ludo teaches addition and subtraction and multiplication. So you see children playing Scrabble. Scrabble teaches spellings. Words, how to join words together. Two letter words, three letter words, long words, so you see that all these indoor and outdoor games, they teach our children some basic things that they don't even learn in the classroom. So belonging to clubs and societies is very germane to uh, grading of these learners' personal skills because they are skills that will become permanent in the lives of these children. So we want to see do they have and if they have take pictorial evidences, ask questions, 
from these children and we see that we are good to go. Let's go to the third aspect. We are now going to the quality of provisions and we start with the quality of teaching and learning. What are those evidences that we want to collect here? We are going to use the ODD, which is the observation, the discussion, and the documentation. Observation, the first thing you observe when you get into a class, you are going into a class to observe a teacher. You want to see, does that teacher have the knowledge and understanding of that lesson, of that topic that that teacher is teaching? So, you observe and you watch that teacher. That is number one observation. You see, is that teacher having mastery of what he or she is teaching? Or is just in that class telling stories that has nothing to do with the topic on ground? We want to see. We want to look at the lesson plan of that teacher. Does that teacher have a lesson plan? That is documentation. A lesson plan is like a guide that, we, that, we, that teacher has to follow when that teacher is teaching a lesson. You also want to see that the lesson, uh, the exercise books of children in the class. The, you, go, you, you don't disturb the class. You don't disrupt the lesson while the lesson is on. But the children that you are seated very close to, you can check the exercise books to see how the, the, the volume of work, the quantity of work that these children have been doing in the past. You look at it and you look at the marking. Are they being marked? Are the, are the, are the exercises, the work done by children, are they marked? And if they are marked, there are three things that we want to look at with marking. Because marking, number one, must be thorough. When we say the thoroughness of marking means that you look, that teacher looks at the handwriting of the children, they where they supposed to cross the T or dot the I, or the grammatical mistakes committed by the children, or spelling mistakes, we make sure that that teacher makes sure that he or she does all this. Then, another thing is, is that marking, is it constructive? Constructive means that the kind of uh, response, the kind of information that teacher writes in the exercise book of those children. For example, uh, it can be, you can do better, you can do better, keep it up. Oh, brilliant of you. This is good. Nice work, neat work, very good presentation, brilliant. So also, we want to see while you are observing, uh, while you are looking at the marks, uh, the exercise books of children, you are also observing whether the, the work that the teacher is teaching is interesting to the children, whether it is challenging to them, whether children are participating in the lesson, the kind of open questions, the type, that type of questioning the teacher is using, and we encourage more of open questions, that teacher should use open-ended questions so that it will elicit more responses. We want to look at the techniques, the pedagogical skill that the teacher is using, the methodology that teacher is using in that class. We want to look at it. We want to see whether the teacher will give an assignment at the end of that lesson. And don't forget, while you are checking the children exercise book, we also look at this assignment, are they being marked? The assignment that have been given in the past, were they marked? The corrections that children have done in the past, were they marked? Then we also want to see the children, the, whether they, they are being grouped or they are doing individual learning. These are some of the things that we also observe while in the class. And is that teacher using instructional material to teach or is just teaching in an abstract way? What of the use of time? Is the teacher making use of the time judiciously or is telling stories that has nothing to do with the topic? These are things that they, they want to see 
when that teacher, when the inspector is in the in the class, what of the learning environment? Is it conducive when you are seated in the class and you are observing the lesson? You look around you. Is that class well illuminated? That is light. Does that class have light? Is there cross ventilation in that class? Uh, are children conducive? Are they happy? Well, what type? Uh, are they comfortable learning in that class? What of the furniture situation in that class? What, what of uh, the the number of children that are in the class? I hope it's not a crowded class. You know, these are things that you are observing as you are in that class, and you are also watching children, whatever they are doing, because the the utmost, the goal of this is that at the end of the lesson, we want children must have been able to acquire new skills. They must have been able to acquire new knowledge. And it is this new knowledge and new skills that children will now use to generate, to develop their own ideas, and that is teaching. That lesson must have been facilitated. And for a lesson to be facilitated, it means that children must have acquired new knowledge, they must have acquired new skills, and it is this two that will, that will make children to develop their own ideas. You go to another quality of provision, that is the quality of curriculum and other activities. And what are the Evidences we want to gather in this aspect. We want to see does that school have national curriculum? You, 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 you find out, you can take a picture of the national curriculum for all subjects that is being taught in that school, not just for two subjects or for three subjects. All subjects that the school says they are they are offering children they must have national curriculum for them. And this national curriculum, it comes with teacher's guides. For any teacher to use the national curriculum, that teacher must have gone through the teacher's guide. It is the teacher's guide that will direct the teacher on how to use the national curriculum. And in Lagos State, being a center of excellence, we also have Lagos State schemes of work. We want to see does that school have Lagos State skills of work? And the skills of work must be in consonant with the level that school operates. If it is a nursery primary school, it must have skills of work for nursery school. It must have skills of work for primary schools. I think for junior primary and for senior primary. And also, that is, junior primary is from primary one to primary three, while the senior primary is from primary four to primary six. And it must also have for the secondary, we have the junior secondary, the GS1 to GS3, and then the senior secondary from SS1 to SS3. So they must have this uh, Lagos State scheme of work to guide the teachers on what to teach in the school. And if it is a school that runs additional curriculum in conjunction with Lagos State curriculum or the national curriculum, this foreign curriculum must also be present. They cannot just say that they are an international school or they are running another a foreign curriculum and we cannot see that foreign curriculum. If it is a British uh, curriculum, that is Cambridge, they must have it. It is, um, if it is an American curriculum they are operating, they must also have it. Te teachers should not prepare lesson notes without any curriculum that will be a guide. Also, apart from this, we want to see under this curriculum, chi do children have textbooks? Do they have textbooks in all the subjects that they are offering in the school? You can go to the library and take a picture of the library. When you get to the library, see all their labeling on the, on the shelves. Do they have subjects that they are offering in school? If, they have, if those subjects are there, do they have books 
for each of these subjects, apart from having books, they must have books of all grade levels. What do I mean by this? It means that when evaluators get to the library, they should check if it is a nursery primary school and year two, which is primary two, if they decide to come to the library, it means the primary two children must be able to see books that is suitable for primary two. If year five, which is primary five, come to the library to use the library, it means they must be able to see books that are meant for primary five. So we need to check on that whoever is uh, uh, doing this aspect must check properly does that school have books? Apart from children's books, do they also have reference books for teachers? Because it is when teachers have reference books that they will be able to prepare a robust lesson plan. If they don't have books, they just be talking and be writing things uh, that has nothing to do with the topic. So apart from that, we want to see the syllabus. If it is a, a, um, a secondary school, we want to see do they have YX syllabus, do they have NECO syllabus, if they are running a Cambridge exam, do they have Cambridge syllabus that will guide these children in writing, in sitting for their exams. We want to see their timetable. Apart from the general timetable that will be in the principal's or the teacher's office, class teachers must also have timetable. We must get to the class and see that there is a, a, a timetable in each class. Teachers, subject teachers must also write their individual timetable in their lesson plan. So whoever is looking at it must look at it in three ways. In the head of school office, there must be a general timetable. In each classroom, there must be a, a timetable for that class. Then individual teacher must also have personal timetable. Then class registers, I've, I've said something like that earlier. We look at their attendance, uh, the class registers of each class. Clubs and societies, I've mentioned it under uh, learners' personal skills. We also look at it here, sports, we also look at it. Do they have uh, records of, of this? Have they been doing it? Because it says that curriculum and other activities, which is saying that it's not only academics alone, there must be other activities that children must be doing in school. So because of that, as evaluators, what are those other activities that we must look at? We look at their co-curricular, there are sporting activities, I've said that earlier, indoor games, outdoor games, and all those type of things. Subject allocation, they must have given us before going to their school, specialization. Because there are certain schools who are having shortage of, uh, of teachers, especially in the, in the secondary schools where we have subject teachers. You may see a school that will not have ICT teacher. And they will now use a teacher that is teaching mathematics to come and teach computer. So subject specialization is key, and then subject allocation is key too. Because by the time you now ask a math teacher to be teaching computer uh, studies, knowing fully well that that teacher does not specialize in ICT. So that subject allocation is wrong. And that teacher might uh, take, off, uh, take the offer, but may not be as good as if that teacher specializes in that subject that you are giving to that teacher. Then that is uh, concerning staff vacancies. We also write it as part of our evidences because when results come, when results come and Maybe the children did not do well in that particular subject. We might be able to say, oh, it's because they do not have a teacher for it. Oh, the teacher that taught them during, uh, before WAEC wasn't a specialized teacher. It was a borrowed teacher who specialized in another area. But because you do not want the children to suffer, 
That is why that teacher has offered to take up that subject. And you cannot cheat nature. It might affect the outcome of the result. We go to another aspect. We have the uh, quality of care, quality of uh, guidance, and quality of safety. There are three words there. The quality of care, guidance, and safety. They are, um, uh, they are just like their names are. So also, I'm going to divide them. For care, what do we mean by care? Don't forget that for during this period of pandemic, every school, when we get to school, we must observe their safety measures. Are they observing COVID-19 safety, um, safety measures? Before we enter the school, we must look at the gates, the entrance. No end marks, no entry. Yeah, do they have it at the gates, like a, like a poster at their gates? All these uh, COVID-19 safety measures, are they having them at the gates? Is there somebody that is measuring our temperature when, when we want to go into the school? Or uh, do they have hand wash basins around the entrance of the school so that when you are going in, you either wash your hands with soap and water or you use hand sanitizer. All these protocols we still maintain it. So whoever is the evaluator in charge of this aspect should not forget this. We are still not out of COVID yet. Yet the percentage of the those who are infected is going down, but that doesn't mean that uh, we still do not have it. So we must not be careless about it. That is that. Then we also ask the school, have they the teachers, have they done the training, the online training of COVID-19, have they done it? If they have done it, check for their certificate because all the teachers who, who took part in this training have been given certificates online. Then have they done fumigation for their school? If they have done it, look for their certificate. Take a picture of it. Take samples, pictures of samples of their certificate, put it with the evidence for uh, this aspect because it's talking about care and it's talking about safety. Then we also ask the school, do they have this um, safeguarding and child policy textbook? If they have, have they done it in a way that they have taken some things that are peculiar to their school and made it to, to be their own in that um, um, textbook, we ask, we ask the school and then we request for it. And if they have it, you take a picture of it or a small video of it and then you put it as one of the evidences to say that the school has safety guidelines uh, textbook. And they have also made it to be their own in that school. Then we ask under care, we also ask for medical facilities. Does the school have a sick bay? We go to the sick bay and look at it. Look at the beds, look at the first aid box. Is it well stocked? Look at the beds, are they well laid? Is it a neat place? Is it conducive? Because a sick bay should be a place where a child should come to and feel better. Not a place that a child will go to and get more sick. That is not a, a good sick bay. Then we want to see, do they have a sick bay register? Register in the sense that for those children who have an ailment or an injury, who visit the, the sick bay, they must take a record of their names, what the injury or the ailment they have, and the type of treatment given to them. So we take a picture of that um, document, sick bay register, take it. Then we also ask the school, has the school done, um, like, is, is the school affiliated to an hospital? We, we ask because if there are instances of referral, maybe something happened in the school, 
and the first aider or the nurse in the school cannot uh, um, take care of that child, then it means that that child will be taken to that affiliated hospital. That is why you must ask for their paper. If they have like a, a contract agreement with an hospital or they, they allow their children to attend a general hospital around that school. Then um, for food too, food is also under care. What type of food do they give to the children? Um, maybe it's a school that supplies children food in, um, during school time or they allow children to bring their food into the school. They must try as much as possible to have like a menu guide, a menu timetable so that in the menu timetable, there will be balanced meal where children, the type of food they will eat will include carbohydrates, protein, vitamins, and uh, fruits. So all these are things that we can ask for. If it is a boarding school, we we'll ask for their menu, menu timetable and get a copy of it. And then if it is um, a school that prepares food for the children, you can also do this. And then for their cooks, you ask for their medical files. Just like teachers have files in school, so also cooks must have files. And in the files, what do we want to check? We want to check whether they have, been, they have um, this medical um, bill, medical um, of six months. You must go to the hospital twice and do medical fitness, whether they are fit to cook for the children. So that is why you need to look at their file. That is documentation. Then immunization too is still part of care. You ask the school, uh, what of immunization? You know, the children in your school, especially if it is a nursery primary school, you ask, are those children, uh, have you done like a meeting, have you had a meeting with the parents to tell them the importance of children being immunized? Even in some government schools, you see these um, local government personnel, they wear green on top of their dresses, they carry all this vaccination, they go from one school to another to immunize children. It's still part of care that we need to ask when we get to the school. Then let's go to guidance. Guidance. Number one there is we want to know does that school have a guidance counselor? That is number one. And if the school has a guidance counselor, the duty of the guidance counselor is to help children to explore their potentials. That is the duty of the counselor. So you ask the counselor for their records. Where are your records? And those records must be in, in, four, in four areas. We want to see your medical record. We want to see record on academics. We want to see record on career. We want to see record on moral. I'll give an example. On, on career. Perhaps the guidance counselor has organized a career talk in the past. A career talk where different professionals will be invited into the school to come and talk to the children. That is career talk. And that counselor must, must document it. So we want to see something like that. Maybe on academics, as the counselor be advising children on how to pursue their areas of interest, areas where they have potentials. Maybe you see a child that can speak very well, can speak English very well, maybe can write very well. You can advise that child, oh, you are very good in this, uh, in this subject. And that is why you are in this press club, you are in the literary and the society. It will rather be nice for you to pursue a career in mass communication. You can become a good broadcaster. 
you can become a new a, a good newscaster, things like that. So a, 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 the work of a counselor, that is part of their work, to encourage children to explore their potentials so that you advise them in the area that they should go. Oh, these are the subjects that you, you want to read law. Okay, if you want to read law, it means you must be good in English literature, literature in English, you must be good in English language, you must take a religious subject, uh, Bible studies or um, Islamic studies must be one of the subjects to be selected by you. You want to go into the sciences or you want to become an engineer, don't forget that technical drawing is one of the subjects that will be required. So that the child, by the time you are guiding those children, it will help them to be able to pursue the career that they, that they want. Another thing is medical. The work of a guidance counselor means that the guidance counselor needs to sensitize, bring awareness, especially on diseases that we have now that we have COVID-19. We want to see, has that counselor organized a talk on COVID-19 in the past? We want to see it in the record documentation. We want to see, has that counselor organized a, a, a talk on HIV AIDS is a disease. Has that counselor organized a talk on sex education? It's something that is uh, uh, common, rampant among teenagers now, though they said, engaging in um, sex before marriage. And these are things that children need to know. When they know from secondary school, at a tender age, they know, they have information. One, the other says that information is power, information is knowledge. When they have information, they'll be able to, to know what to do and what not to do. Then, he's still talking about guidance. Let's go to uh, safety. What are the documents that we want to get when we are observing safety in school? Number one, well, before evaluators go into a school at the gates what sort of safety precaution was taken at the gates when you get to the gate of that school you observe do they just open their gate and ask you to come in or they ask you questions at the gate it's an evidence a very strong evidence which means that if kidnappers come into that school they just open the gate for them and say okay come in you must they must ask you at the gate, yes, how can we help you? What is your mission here? And then you must, be, they must, be, you must sign their visitor's book at the gate. And there must be a visitor's tag that will be given to you as an inspector before you can be allowed to enter a school. That is where safety comes from. Then there are some other things for special children. If the school runs an inclusive education, do they have working tools for special children? If it is a, a real, a, a special school, do they have tools that will cater for children who need special attention, we want to see. Then their school bus is part of um, safety. The school bus, how many children enter the school bus at the same time? This COVID-19 has given some guidelines on how, how many children should be in a school bus. You must be able to see. The way they are seated in the class, do they observe COVID-19 pro safety protocol? You can take picture of children that are seated in the class. It's still on safety. Do they wash their hands how many times? And all, the, all, all those protocols must be observed. Those ones that you can take picture, you take picture. Those ones that you can collect documents, you collect documents. Then we we'll go to the last quality of provision there. That is uh, the quality of the learning environment. When we get to the school, we want to look at the buildings. You take a picture of their buildings. Are they in good repair? Good repair means that I hope they are not, um, they do not have cracks on the wall. They, they are not dilapidated, they do not have roofs that are leaking. So that is 
when schools are in good repair, it means that those buildings are stand, those structures are good. We want to see, you can take pictures, we want to see the, uh, the, the ground, are they clean, are they tidy, we want to go to the toilet, are they clean, are they tidy, are they gender sensitive, that is gender sensitive means that toilets for boys, there are some toilets allocated to boys and there are some toilets also allocated to girls and there are toilets also allocated to teachers and the school management. We want to see all this in the school under the learning environment. Does the school have a fence? We call it perimeter fence. You go and check, go around the school and check. They are, they are bush. Do they have bush there? Do they, have they cut it? We go around and check. It's still about talking about the environment. Don't forget that when you get into the toilet, you want to look, does it have graffiti? We all know what graffiti is. All those uh, words, uh, on the, um, these words that children write on the wall in the toilet. You want to see, is that toilet free of graffiti? Don't forget that. We want to go to all the special rooms in the school. All the special rooms in the school. Are they being used for what they are meant to be used for? Are those places standardized? We want to go to the class. Is it a standardized classroom? We want to go to the laboratories. Are they, are they well arranged? Is it the, the laboratories, are they there? Or they have converted them to a classroom? You go to the sick bay. You go to the TD room. You go to the fine arts room. You go to the home economics room. You go to all the special rooms that they have in the school. Are they being used for what they are meant to be used for? Then you ask for the safety uh, precautions, like fire uh, extinguisher. How many do they have in the school? You look at the uh, defense again. Is there an encroachment in the school? Because sometimes you get to a school and there will not be any fence, which means that a madman can even walk into the school and use the school as a foot as a footpath to another place. All these are things that you should look for in, in under the learning environment in the school. We look at the sports facilities, the sporting facilities in the school. The field, you can take a picture of it. All the sporting facilities, uh, the sporting equipment they have, there are indoor games, take a picture. There are outdoor games, you take a picture. That is talking about learning environment. Also, you look at their garden. Their garden, do they have a garden? Some, uh, do they have a farm? Because of a uh, shortage of land, a lot of schools do not have farm. But they might have a small garden where they are planting some things there. You look at the aesthetics of the school. Does the school have flowers? Is it, is it well beautified? Is it well laid out? Are there footpaths in the school? Are there walkways in the school? That is still talking about the learning environment. All these are things that you can take pictures of and include them in your report. When you are writing your report, you include all these um, pictures you have taken about the learning environment in your report. And then the last aspect is talking about leadership and management. That is the last aspect. The first thing we want to know under the last aspect is, does the school have a vision and mission statement? What of core values? Where are they? Because they are supposed to be pasted around the school and the principal's office, and at the entrance of the school, all the important places in the school, you must have this vision statement, mission statement, core values, because they are supposed to be shared with all stakeholders. That is the vision and mission statement. Also, we want to see the SDP, School Development, plan of the school, you collect it. Don't forget that 
you ask the school to write out or you take a picture of the vision, mission, core values, then write, take, uh, ask the principal about the history of the school, you take it, you collect the SDP from the school, you also take it, that is the school development plan. Then you ask for brush sheet, brush sheet from the, from the school, the results from the principal or the brush sheet because there is something we call called performance data is a is a is a uh, key issue on that test. So the the performance data you ask about the brush sheets or the test the result of the test from the from the principal in the school so that you make sure that that principal is on top of the school is on top of what she or he is doing in the school. Then apart from the SDP we also ask the teacher and uh, the principal what the results in the past three years, just like we did under the achievements and standards. We ask for the committee files. Does the school, does the principal ask committee? Because the principal cannot do everything on its own. There must be committee in the school. You ask for the committee file. We ask for the roster, ro the duty roster. There must be division of labor. How has this, the head of school been coping with work in that school? Is there, um, due to roster, what each teacher should do? Then you ask for the learners' representative council record. They must have it in the school. You ask the principal to give you this in the school. Then you ask the principal, has there been PD hours? PD hours mean professional development hours or PDD. Some people call it professional development day. And it is not that they will do it while you are there, but the, the head of school must be able to give you an evidence that they have done this in the past. And then you ask for it and then you write all those things down or take picture of it to, serve, to say that in this school, the principal Build the capacity of teachers in the school so that children's performance can improve. Then, supervision notes of the principal, the vice principals, the head teacher of the nursery primary, the assistant head teacher. Some people call it supervision, some call it monitoring, some call it inspection, whatever. But you must be able to look at it and take pictures of the last three. Um, visits that they, uh, they, they did, they carried out in the school. Then you ask the principal or the head of school for all the statutory records in the school, all the records that they keep in the school you want to see. And what are those records? Log book, admission register, movement book, staff attendance register, all the records, inventory book, uh, achievement stroke uh, commendation book, uh, conduct book, the conduct book at school, the achievement stroke um, uh, commendation and then punishment book, all manners of books that they keep in the school you want to see. You want to see the teaching records too. And what are those teaching records? The lesson plan, the maths book, the diaries, the curriculum, all of those things you want to see them in the office. They are evidences and then you take pictures of them that they are available in the school and they are being used in the school. Then reports of inspection carried out in that school in the last three years. Why do we ask for reports? We want to see the areas of recommendation because we visit a school today and you visit a school in two weeks time and when you visit that school two weeks ago you have told the school do this the school, these are the recommendations, and then you go again after two weeks, and you find out that some schools, they will do what you have told them to do. Why some schools will not even do it? So you want to see the, the reports, any inspection carried out in the school in the past three years, have they been using those recommendations to correct lapses in that school? Don't also forget that the school must have submitted school self-evaluation format. 
that is the first thing that you must get from the head of school before you visit that school. And lastly, you ask questions, you interview the principal and record, uh, or the head of school and record the responses. You ask questions. During uh, that principal or the head of school sees his or her arrival in the school. What are, what are those things that he has done? What are, has he added value to what he met on ground? You ask questions, questions that are germane to you grading the principal or the head teacher, you ask questions. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Any other thing that you feel you can also get that will help you to judge, to make a, a pitch judgment, to have a reliable report, you also ask. Thank you. Please, if you have any questions concerning gathering of evidences, send your questions to info at oeklagos.com. Thank you.